You're watching Cycle Talk, Australia's motorcycle show. From sports bikes to motocross to cruisers, we love them all. We ride them, thrash them, test them, and sometimes we even crash them. On this episode of Cycle Talk, we've got the Yamaha XSR 900 on test. We've got a tool to help you set up your suspension. We go naked touring, but first, let's check out From the Apex. Kawasaki's Jonathan Ray is on track to win his third World Superbike Championship title, and it'll be the third in a row. And we couldn't remember the last time anybody did that, so we did a little bit of research, and it turns out the reason we couldn't remember it, it was because it's never been done. Since 1987, there's been a couple of double uh, world champions. There's been a few uh, people who've won it three or four times, but nobody's ever won three on the trot. Now, Ray's won five out of the first six races. Uh, Chaz Davies from Ducati's picked up the other one, but it gives him a 50-point lead in the title, and that means that Ray could actually sit out a full round, let Davies win both races, and Ray would still lead on a count back of, of wins. So he's doing really, really well, but a similar thing happened last year where Ray shot out to an early lead and that lead was eroded as the season went by and he only took the title at the last round of the championship. So it's still looking good and the racing's been pretty hot in the Superbike World Championship, but at this stage, Ray is looking good to do something nobody ever has done before. Yamaha has an Easter promotion which is aimed at getting your kids off their iPads and I'm not happy about that because the iPad is a great way to read the Cycle Talk, uh, Cycle Talk's digital edition. So I hope all those kids are reading Cycle Talk. But admittedly, when they finish reading Cycle Talk each month, getting out in a motorbike's a great idea. Anyway, if you want to get your kids off their iPads, you can get a great deal on Yamaha's 50s right up to the 125 LWE and the YFM90R ATV. You get a free Yamaha watch and cash back on the different models. And it varies a little bit on how much money you get back depending on the bike. And you get an extra $100 if you get a 2016 model instead of a 2017. Cycle Talk made a video of the 2016 TTR 125. Just search the website to see that test and review. Now this one's got me stuffed. In the category of you've got to be kidding me, Honda's reintroducing the NM4. So a few years back, they introduced this motorcycle, 670cc twin cylinder cruiser, that's as ugly as a proverbial hatful. I can't believe they're bringing this bike back. It didn't sell when it was first, uh, first released a few years ago, and now they're reintroducing it. How it got off the designer's drawing board is a complete and utter mystery to me. I mean, it's a motorcycle that really leaves me speechless when I start looking for things that, that are positive about it. And I wouldn't be much use as a motorcycle TV show host if I couldn't talk about the machines. But I can't see any real redeeming features in this bike. It just looks like something that they've decided is the future of, future of cruiser motorcycles. And it's not. The Yamaha WR250R and WR250X now have their own event. This year's inaugural event will be at Cessnock in the New South Wales Hunter Valley, May 26 to May 28. Organised by Greg Yeager, a man who rode a WR250R across the Simpson Desert unassisted, the event will feature rides, uh, awards, prizes, and lots of information about how to make your WR250 even better. Check out the website on screen for more information. Indian has announced the Chieftain Elite with even more features to the normal Chieftain to make a truly top of the line model. Jokes about over the top aside, the Chieftain Elite does look pretty cool and there is only 350 going to be produced for the entire world. Beyond the hand finished paint, there's new 10 spoke wheels, a cutback front guard, aluminium billet footboards, 200 watt sound system and lots and lots of other bling as well. All that bling will set you back $47,995 but I think you can be pretty confident that if you do get one, you won't be seeing too many other people at the traffic lights riding the same bike. This bike test is brought to you by Wiley X, absolute premium protection.
The modern trend to customising motorcycles which traditionally were just commuters or sports tourists is extended right up to now that where we've got bikes like this new Yamaha XSR 900. Now it's very heavily based on the MT-09 which in itself has been a very successful bike with a, that is a lot of fun, very powerful and very capable and very versatile. It's designed as a platform for you to start to customise. Now, some people are going to look at this bike and go, what is it? Now, it really is a modern motorcycle. It's got, you know, all sorts of modes. It's got ABS and it's got 115 stonking horsepower. The three-cylinder engine is a little bit, you know, unusual, I suppose, although Yamaha did build a range of three-cylinder motorcycles back in the day. So if you go and do some research on this bike, the XS in the XSR, well, that's a very traditional name for a lot of Yamahas back in the day, the XS650 being the most common of those. And the XS650 was a very interesting bike in that it was a pretty well a copy of the British parallel twins of the day. Um, but it became a bike which was heavily um, customised, became very, very popular, sold in big numbers over many years, um, and they're still out there today. Now, by putting, making it an XSR, it's interesting too, if you drop the X off, you've got SR900, and of course the SR400 came back. Now, I don't know if that's a deliberate ploy, but it's all that play on the retro, on the old world, and yet, this is a thoroughly modern motorcycle. Only the looks are retro. And because of that, you've got a very, very capable motorcycle, as well as one that's very, very interestingly styled. What I'd like to do with one of these bikes is do the steampunk customization. Now the steampunk movement combines sort of steam engine style um, imagery with science fiction and it can be really really radical and really really interesting and it's just a, a, a really cool looking artistic style and this bike screams to be steampunk. But beyond that, what have you got? You've really got a bike which goes, stops, handles. You could use it for commuting, you could use it for sports riding, you could use it for everyday rides. You could possibly go touring on it too, although off the straight out of the uh, showroom floor, there's not a lot of touring accessories available, but there are a heap of customization bits if you want to dress it up and make it look good. We're really impressed with this machine. It's an awful lot of fun. Now, is it a styling exercise that will disappear in a few years' time? Who knows? We think it looks great. We think it'll still look great in 10 or 20 years when a lot of modern bikes don't look modern anymore. So from that perspective, I think this is a bike you could buy. If you love the style, you could keep it for a long, long, long time. And if you're looking for a bike that's also very capable and not just retro, because when you think about it, most retro style bikes offer fairly pedestrian performance. This doesn't. This absolutely stonks. It's got a lot of power, a lot of fun, and yet it looks like you've customised it when you wheel it off the showroom floor. This product review is brought to you by Avon Tyres. When it comes to getting your bike to handle, the most critical thing that you really need to do first is check your tyre pressures. But after that, you've got to set your suspension up. You've got to get that static sag right. And this tool from Motul, the Slacker, is designed to help you do exactly that. It's a unit itself which attaches by a big magnet to any steel axle. And then this clamp goes onto your, uh, your plastics uh, at the front or the rear, so it does both ends. And then this cable runs up to it 
and then with no weight on the bike that sets it to zero and in actual fact this is an auto zeroing one which makes life a lot easier if you don't have a race stand things like that so when you set it to zero you then take the bike off the stand and it's got static sag straight away and then from there you can follow the instructions and, and learn about your suspension to get it set up perfectly how you want it for the best handling that you need. It uh, comes with a remote display so that when you're sitting on the bike you can see what the, what the sag is. It makes life a lot easier to, to set it up. Now the standard kit is aimed at dirt bikes. You can get a street kit as well and that's got some um, brackets and straps and things to help you um, get the uh, cables and things in the right place to set up a road bike. So just as important for sports riders to have, uh, have their bike handling properly is to have their static sag set correctly. And I even think for touring riders who are going to add a passenger, add luggage, uh, it wouldn't be a bad idea to, to set their static sag properly too. So the Motul Slacker Auto Reset, so it's version 2, it's priced at $199, They're available Australia wide. You get more information from proaccessories.com.au. This feature is brought to you by Speedy on Track. To celebrate the purchase of my new Yamaha MT10, we decided to go on a bit of a road trip. <laughs> well, it's not too big a road trip, it's like three days up the Oxley Highway and whatnot. We left Newcastle yesterday, we went up Thunderbolts Way, through Gloucester, and uh, then we detoured off through um, a little place called Nundle, which is near Tamworth, and we stayed overnight at a place called Bendemeer. It's a really old historic town off the highway now, and it's, it's, I think it's famous really for its uh, farming and timber, uh, the timber mill. Anyway, so cool little place. They didn't have Foxtel, so we had to watch the football on Ryan's mobile phone, which was a bit difficult, but we got through it. I love the Thunderbolts way, like I mean it, it used to be pretty bloody rough years ago. You know when you come up the hill, you know when you, you, you go across those couple of bridges and you go past the Bread Eye Reserve and whatnot, but you get oh, up that hill. A few years back that yeah, was, that was when they were doing it up. When you first start to go up the windy bits, actually it must be after where they did that new part, and um, it, was, it was shocking, like I mean it was like the, the road surface was, surface was just ridiculous, like, you know. So you get to the point where you didn't want to ride it. But, you know, when you get up to Walker, which we're going to stay there tonight, that's a great little town too. And it's, it can be hot down on the coast, but it's just nice, crisp sort of temperature. And we're staying at the Royal, we, we've stayed there before, that Royal Hotel. You know, the old Art that's Deco right. place? Yeah. We'll take a run down to... Uh, Ginger's Creek, that's always a good spot to check out. Very windy road. Yeah, very windy road. <laughs> it's a bit of a naked sort of touring thing. We've got uh, my MT10, uh, we've got the CF Moto 650NK that Dave's riding, and we've got the Z900 Kawasaki that uh, the Ryan, the man behind the camera, is riding. So to kit this out for a bit of a tour, I mean, it's a sports tour, it's not a tour as such. Um, but I've put the, the factory Yamaha accessory screen. I've got the accessory 24 litre um, expandable tank bag. And I've got a Ventura Evo rack and bag. So uh, I'm pretty well set. So Dave, I can see you've put a sheepskin seat cover off. Off what? That's uh, off uh, the old GSX. All oh, right. Yeah. So what else have you done to uh, equip that bike for touring? A backpack. <laughs> oh, six enough. kilos worth in it. <laughs> no wonder you look like the hunchback of Notre Dame, <laughs> eh? So uh, Ryan's going to tell us a little bit about uh, what he's done to the Z900. Yeah, so I'm riding the Z900. Um, to kit it out, I've only done a few things to it. There's a, um, a Ventura tank bag, a Sheepy Hollow sheepskin seat pad cover, uh, and I've also thrown a Krieger uh, a seat bag on it as well. Um, I'm also wearing a backpack because I've got a fair bit of camera gear to carry. Um, yeah, so the bike's essentially kitted out and we're off and run it. What's the whole point of heading away on a trip like this? Well, we wanted to show that if you can go touring on naked bikes, you can go touring on anything. It's about getting out to the places you've never been, riding the best roads in the country and riding the crap ones along the way, meeting lots of new people. Next week, 
We meet Save the Oxley campaigner Ken Healy at Ginger's Creek Tavern. This is well out of shape. <laughs> Ken speaks to us about the progress being made in the area and took us for a squirt up the mountain. Our local member, Melinda Pavey, is now the Honourable Minister for the RMS. Right, okay. So we've got Melinda Pavey on board to a certain point where she has said to the RMS and to the motorcycle community to engage with the RMS, which we've done, uh, and for the RMS to push forward their second review and come back with a more realistic number. 70 kilometres an hour is ridiculously low. She accepts that. The RMS, I think, accept that. And we're now waiting for them to to call a, a meeting, which they said they would do, and get back to us and um, with a, a proposal to what they reckon they're going to do with it. In later episodes, we spend the night at Walker Royal Cafe. Check out one hell of a sidecar. It's a bit of a wobble at a certain speed, which they all tend to do. And a steampunk gallery in Walker, the Antipodean Tinker. It's a very much a steampunk bike. There's a lot of black chrome and copper. This has to be the greatest roundabout in Australia. So do you like doing the uh, Thunderbolt way? Yeah, well, anything to get off the straights, I always try and stay away from the highways. I yeah. hate, hate highways. So it's boring as This product review is brought to you by Spitty, on track. Contrary to popular belief, winter is actually a great time to ride motorbikes in Australia. If you wear the right gear, you can stay nice and warm, and it's often drier uh, in Australia in the winter than it is in the summer in a lot, of, a lot of places, especially places like Queensland. It's too hot in the summertime for me. The winter time is definitely the go for riding motorcycles. But it does get a bit cool occasionally, and that's why Today we're having a look at these five gloves, uh, GT2 uh, WP gloves. Now, they are, this is how they come packaged. Pull that away. So, first thing to take note is fully waterproof. Hypora insert. Uh, this is a really thin membrane style insert that keeps the, um, that lets your sweat go pass through, but won't let um, water, uh, full droplets of water get through the glove and, and give you really wet hands. It's also got a thin shillet lining to improve that um, the, the warmth and then the next thing that you need to look at is safety. So they use um, hard protectors in the knuckles and there's also a hard protector here and importantly down here as well. So if you do have a crash and you come down on the glove, um, you've got a good chance that your hand will be protected by those, uh, those protectors. And of course, lots of leather and um, stretch panels and things for comfort. And the leather, of course, is for safety. Now, the interestingly up the back here, don't do that at home, kids, bad for your teeth. Interestingly, it's got a double um, loop fastening so this one here goes over there and then that one that flap there will protect this if in the event of an accident to stop it getting um, ripped off and damaged which will which can actually mean the difference between your glove staying on your hand during an accident and not and now the gauntlet part of the glove has a, an elastic strap here and then you can the way they've designed it is it can go over um, your, glove, your jacket can go over the top, or you can leave that looser, open that up, and then your jacket can go inside. It's up to you. Very, very comfortable, not terribly bulky. Uh, so the idea is these use the, the technology and the design to keep your hands warm and not making them really, really bulky, uh, which is uncomfortable and gives you a lack of control on the controls of the, of the motorcycle. Now they use different types of leather, uh, for comfort and and feel and of course they come from five gloves who whose real sole business is to make gloves mainly motorcycle gloves and uh, and they do a really really good job we love our five gloves around here and I'm really looking forward to using these 
um, in the coming months uh, as the weather gets cooler. They said there was a bike underneath the clown face for me to interview tonight. I've been looking around, but I still haven't found this bike. I don't know where the hell it is. <laughs> oh my God, look at this thing. Instantly, everyone that looks at it just starts laughing and smiling and no one can believe where I've ridden it from. I decided to get the little Honda when my son was small and starting to learn to ride. He had a little Suzuki 50 and then he had a PW80 and my 250 dirt bike was just too fast. And 20 years later, I've still got it. I've rebuilt the motor. It's no longer 49cc's, it's a, a stroker with a bigger size barrel and bigger head, so it's now 108cc's. It's a four speed, it's got a manual clutch, it's got a, a high volume oil pump, it's got an oil catch can on the breather to stop all the oil vapour getting out the back of it and tops out at about 95, 98 kilometres an hour on the flat. 2014 wall to wall ride, I rode from Huskisson to Goulburn Police Academy via Nerega and then rode it from Goulburn down to Canberra. Your ass does pay a big price, you get rigid ass because there's no back suspension. I've also done a lap of Kosciuszko National Park from Jindabyne to Jindabyne via Adminaby and Cairncoban. It seems faster than what it is, so I've had people on big bikes tell me that I look like I'm doing a million miles an hour, like going down the hill to the Browar Waters Ferry. You know, I've also been accused by the police down at Jindabyne for hanging off the thing like Nick's doing, coming down from Threadbar, and I just laughed at him, and, you know, and that's a bit impossible when he only does 80 off a cliff. I can't believe all the work Andrew's done on this and the trips he's gone on. So I've got a question for you. Would you have the balls to go on long distance trips on a bike like this? <laughs>